Hello everyone and welcome to Canteen Cup. My name is Scott and good afternoon to everybody. It's a hot and humid day here in Georgia. Uh, temperatures in the low 90s and the humidity makes it feel like it's close to 100 it seems. Uh, as you can, well you maybe not be able to see, I am still working from a selfie stick because I'm in the process of moving and I've got most of my stuff packed up in a storage shed and uh, Boy, this moving stuff it just wears me out. But uh, hopefully we'll be in our new home in three or four weeks, we hope. And um, that depends on the weather and when they get things finished. And then hopefully we'll get this house sold and just be done with it and then be out where we need to be. Anyhow, I wanted to talk to you about flu season. Uh, it's not that far away. And... Um, you know, the flu changes every year, and we, we get, you know, a lot of people get the flu, especially those of us that have to interact with others. Um, I'm not so much going to talk about the flu shot, getting it versus not getting it. Um, I know, you know, people have different feelings about flu shots, and it's up to you, but as you get older, as you get into my age, um, things like the flu become more important because it can kill you. Um, the older you get, the weaker your immune system becomes. I've got a very good immune system and um, I can typically fight off the flu, but for those of you that don't, you know, when you get older, you may consider start taking a flu shot because the flu does kill people every year, even in today's modern science. Uh, that being said, uh, because I interact with a, a diverse amount of people throughout the year, that I do take a flu shot. Um, I, I feel that the benefits outweigh the detractors of it. And so I have been taking the flu shot um, probably for about seven years. But up until about seven years ago, actually eight or nine years ago, I didn't take a flu shot at all. When I got the flu, <coughs> I just kind of hunkered down on it. And um, But now that I'm older, the flu is a more serious disease, so I've decided to take a flu shot. But that's really not what this video is about. It is about the flu. The flu. And it is about flu season, which is coming up. It generally starts in the fall. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about homeopathic remedies for the flu. Uh, we talk about, you know, bad things coming. We talk about, you know, maybe not having the health care we used to have. It may be taken, care, may be taken away from us. Uh, it may be world without rule, it may be SHTF, the zombies may attack, whatever. But, you know, you need to think about what happens when you cannot go to the drugstore and get your bottle of extra strength flu season NyQuil or whatever it is you take. Um, that could be serious. And so I do have a homeopathic remedy, and I am going to put a caveat in there that you know I am not I am not a doctor I am not a a homeopathic practitioner these are things I learn and I am passing them on to you and along with that I'm saying I'm passing the risk along to you that if you decide to do what I do you do so at your own risk just as the people I learned it from you know, told me the same thing that I assumed the risk by doing this, but I think, I think this is a good, um, a good uh, recipe. I think it's, uh, I think it benefits. I've done some research on it. There seems to be enough background in there for it, and so um, we have, especially here in the South, we have what I call a weed that is actually a very good um, antiviral, very good flu um, medicine. It's the same, it has the same chemical compound that is in Tamiflu. 
and that's a prescription drug that doctors give out. But there is a weed here in the southeast and in the southern United States that has that same property that you can turn into a tincture and use it to help abate the flu. And that weed is the sweet gum tree. Now people say, how can, how can a, a tree be a weed? Well, if you've ever had to deal with sweet gum, you would agree with me. It is a nuisance, or it can be a nuisance. Uh, the wood, it's hard to cut. It won't burn. It's, and the, the, um, the tree grows everywhere. The, it, it actually, um, I forget what they call it, but you can get stuff pop up. You can get little trees pop up from the roots. And so it's like a weed. It's like once you have it, you can't get rid of it. But, you know, in its defense, it does help abate the flu. Now, for those that don't know what the sweet gum looks like, it's a fairly large tree. It can grow up to, uh, I think, 100 feet tall. It can get up to six foot wide. The leaf, and here's a leaf of the sweet gum tree. It's a five. It's a five-lobed leaf. It's pretty. It's pretty unique to the sweet gum. I don't think there's anything exactly like it. Um, the smaller the tree, the smaller the leaf. This came off a tree that's probably 50 or 60 foot tall. So that's the leaf. If you live in the southeast, you probably won't have to look very far to find one. They're all over the place. So, but the important part, and the reason why I'm talking about the flu here in, in early July, is the, uh, where you get, and it's shamanic acid, is um, the acid that you, that's the compound that's used to treat flu that's in it's in sweet gum you can also get it, I believe from star anise but that's native to China and not here so for those of us that live here you know, sweet gum is what we got now to turn this into a tincture you have to collect what they call the fruits or the little seed pods uh, as a kid, I used to call them itchy balls because you'd step on them, they'd hurt, and it seemed to irritate your skin a little bit. But here's what the, the fruit looks like. Let me get, there we go. But that's the fruit. And if you notice on this fruit, the the little points have not opened up yet that means this is an infertile fruit and this is this is the condition you want to collect these and what you'll do with these is you'll collect them you'll bring them in the house and you'll chop them up it probably takes eight or ten maybe a few more but chop them up into pieces put them in a mason jar and then fill the mason jar with 100 proof alcohol all right, and I don't buy the real expensive stuff as I make tinctures out of it, but um, I'm using Old Smoky Tennessee Moonshine. It's basically unflavored alcohol. It's, it's 100 proof, which is what you need for this tincture, and it was pretty inexpensive, um, but it's it's I believe it's corn whiskey it's not you know no taste just you know all horsepower but it's what you need for the tincture and so what you'll do is you'll take you'll take your your sweet gum balls you'll you'll fill up a jar cover them with a hundred proof alcohol then you let them sit and soak and then every day or so you just kinda turn them upside down here is a batch Here's a batch I made now. This is my sweet gum concoction. I've had it for uh, probably three or four weeks. I'm going to let this stew like this for a couple months. And then what you do when, when you're ready to turn it into a tincture is you strain it into another jar or strain it into a bowl and pour it back in. But you strain that. And then you now have a tincture so that if you or somebody in your family gets the flu, you have a way to combat it especially if you can't get to the store 
or there is no store to go to. Now the dosage, from what I understand, is a quarter, typically it's a quarter of a teaspoon every two hours. If you have really bad symptom, symptoms, you can bump that up to half a teaspoon. Okay, notice a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon. This is a very potent tincture. Don't overdo it. And again, your mileage may vary. Your sweet gum trees may, may or may not be as strong or whatever. But be careful. Remember, this is at your own risk. I am not a practitioner. I am just passing along some information I have received. That if I get the flu this winter, that is what I will be doing. It doesn't mean it's best for you. So all the, all the caveat stuff out the side. I wanted to bring this to you so you can further research. I think if you type in sweet gum and flu or just sometimes sweet gum, you can find lots of information on how to make this. But for those of us that live in the South, we have a ready-made flu medicine that probably everyone has somewhere on their property or very nearby because it grows everywhere that you can use to treat the flu if you are in a, in a situation where you don't have the opportunity to get to a drugstore or a doctor. So there it is, um, a little bit of homeopathic medicine, a little bit of um, you know how to treat. One more little tidbit is that aspirin, regular aspirin, uh, another source for it is the inner bark of the willow tree and you want to you know you don't want to take a you take the, the you strip the bark off and then before you get to the real wood there's like an inner bark which is not as soft as the outer bark and not as hard as the wood you'll see it you strip off something about the size of your pinky maybe a little less than your pinky and you chew that and that has the same acid that's in aspirin in fact that's where it used to come from and so now you have a pain reliever and you have something for the flu so like everything you know when you go trying this stuff you know find out what's best for you but these are some things that you can do to help you when there's nothing else so that's all I got for you for today um, everybody be safe and be secure